Hey, everybody. My name is Ryan Friedline. I'm with the University of Utah. I'm on the marketing team there. I'm here with three of my favorite people in the country. We have Ellison Kelly at UNLV, Craig Peden at Cal, and Stacy Thrower at Georgia Southern. And today we're going to talk all about basketball, all the prep work and the chaos before the chaos. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and uh, start with some introductions. Uh, so if we can talk about uh, some of the responsibilities within our current role, and then a little bit about our career path, how we got to today. So Allison, go ahead. Thanks, Ryan. Hi, everyone. I'm Allison Kelly. I am at UNLV as the Marketing and Game Presentation Coordinator. I oversee the marketing efforts uh, for volleyball, women's basketball, and softball, secondary at football, and assist with men's basketball as needed. Uh, previously, I have been at the University of Central Missouri. After that, went to the Kansas City Chiefs for a, a pro stint. Uh, after that, I was at the University of Akron. And before UNLV, I was at Minot State University. Hello, everyone. Craig Peden here. Greetings from California, uh, where I am the Director of Marketing and Game Presentation. Um, I'm kind of a jack of all trades here at Cal, where I worked with all of our revenue sports and just, you know, enjoying those great California rainy vibes this early January. Um, so before that I was at Western Kentucky where I was a marketing assistant and I graduated with my undergrad from the University of Louisville um, where I was involved with marketing at both schools and along the path and looking forward for this great conversation. Hey everyone, my name is Stacey Thor Jr. I'm the Assistant Director of Promotion and Fan Experience here at Georgia Southern University. I currently oversee women's and men's basketball, our internship program, and I'm and our mascot. I'm also co-secondary with baseball. And I'm great to be on this panelist with Ryan, Allison, Craig to talk about our marketing efforts of basketball. Thank you guys. A little bit about myself. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm at the University of Utah. I got my start at Georgia Southern. I was there for three years. I actually remember when we hired Stacy as an intern. He quickly rose to the top. Um, but uh, from Georgia Southern, I went on uh, to the mid-major ranks. I spent some time at Stephen F. Austin, Oral Roberts, Mercer University, and I've been at Utah for about a year and a half. Um, so let's talk about that. We've all been at uh, different places, different levels. Um, so with, throughout your career, um, what are some of the differences between the different sizes of institutions and organizations you've worked at? Allison, let's start with you, since I know you've been everywhere from the Division II ranks up to the professional level with the Kansas City Chiefs. What are some of the differences that you've seen? Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, when I was at the Kansas City Chiefs, I was on the customer service fan experience side. So it was a lot more hands-on with uh, fans itself. So making sure that their game day was great uh, from whether it's, you know, accessing their tickets, transferring tickets, parking, because uh, as you know, or as some of you may not know, Kansas City is very well known for their tailgating and lining up hours before gates even open. So great atmosphere there. But, you know, one of the things uh, we always do as well uh, before the game actually starts, we also have meetings within, um, our working environment. So we're meeting with ops, we're meeting with, you know, security from that standpoint, making sure everyone's on the same page, having that meeting before the actual game itself, and just making sure we know what's going on, if there are things we need to look out for from that standpoint. Uh, then transitioning, you know, division two level. Um, when I got to Minot State, we were still in kind of that peak COVID time. So we actually weren't, we didn't have a fall season, and we actually weren't allowed to uh, do in-game promotions, giveaways, sell tickets, anything of that nature. So, you know, from that standpoint, it was a lot of uh, working hands-on with graduate assistants, whether that was putting up the A-frames, sandwich board signs, making sure the scripts looked well, uh, and, you know, just collaborating as we are a smaller institution. And now here at UNLV, we've got a lot more departments, creative operations, communications, you know, a little bit of everything, especially from a team standpoint. So just kind of collaborating, just making sure everyone's on the same page, whether it's for the game week for multiple games or just for game days and just making sure everyone knows what they're doing. And if there's anything big or special happening, we know how we're going to do it and exactly how it'll be executed. Good stuff, Craig. I know you've been at uh, Western Kentucky um, as well as Louisville and currently at Cal. 
What are some of the differences that you've seen between the different size schools? Yeah, you know, Ryan, I think the biggest thing that comes to mind is how passionate each fan base can be. Um, you know, Louisville and Cal this year had some unique storylines that they were head to head. Um, glad that that has kind of turned for both schools, but just the level of the fanhood. And I think one of the things that makes it really unique is that here on the West Coast, a Cal fan really is not paying attention to what's happening back east, where, you know, a Louisville or Western Kentucky or even, you know, I hate to say it, a Kentucky fan um, are paying more attention to college basketball across the whole, um, whole country. So it's unique dynamics, but at the end of the day, all the fans are just passionate to support the student athletes, you know, support the schools, have fun, you know, going to events to have fun that well, it's not too different, but at the same time, you get to kind of learn more about each institution so that makes them unique. Uh, you know, I, I'm playing nice just because Louisville's getting ready to play, uh, just played Kentucky and then out here we're playing Stanford. So it's the peak, peak rivalry weeks of fun. So I'm taking some easy jabs at everyone. Well, Allison, you mentioned COVID. Um, what was it like going through COVID? And this is open for everybody. But what was it like going through COVID and now coming out of it? Um, what was that process like for, for each of you? Allison, go ahead and start. Absolutely. You know, I know everyone's still pretty cautious, as they should be. Uh, it still is a factor across the nation. Um, but I know last year, uh, my first year here at UNLV, it was a lot more cautious, you know, we still would do t-shirt tosses, but I know benches stayed on their same side, not too much crossover if possible uh, for volleyball, for example. But, you know, I do, did my best to wear a mask as often as I could, um, whether you could hear me on a headset, who knows, but <laughs> we got the job done at all the sports. So that's always good. But, you know, just taking those precautions itself, making sure there's enough time for, you know, teams to get down to the locker rooms. Uh, so there's not too much of a crossover if they if they do decide to do that or you know from a promotional standpoint not too much on court elements because again you don't want to expose a player team even the a, like a coach anything like of that nature you just don't want to expose them to that and potentially cause any issues with their season so it was a lot uh it was a lot less of things to do from an on court standpoint but we did try to involve video board elements so did a high speed rubble challenge um so a fan has to guess as many of a certain topic as they could within 15 seconds and went from there. So, you know, it's good to kind of be back on court with, you know, a dress, dress and dribble or a layup challenge, whatever the case may be. So definitely excited how we're starting to progress forward. And Craig, I know being in the Pac-12, we've had a um, unique experience um, with the precautions the conference has taken. What was your experience at Cal like throughout that process and how are you coming out of it? You know, I think back to last January where it was on full display of how Cal, and when I say Cal, I'm specifically referring here to us here at California. We were the only California Pac-12 school to actually have fans at one point in time during the season, uh, which we were like, wait, what? Uh, just because we had a, um, probably, us and Stanford had two of the most strictest probably restrictions throughout most of the pandemic uh, that we were honored to have fans, but it was unique uh, in the sense of we were able to still have the California straw hat band march in while it wasn't on the court. It was or at the beginning, I would say, as we started to welcome back in fans, we kind of marched them in through the top part of our stadium. And then we kind of worked out with the teams of like the court was cleared at 13 minutes that we were able to march in the band, get them seated for um, anthem. So it was really unique to still kind of do a game day full of everything that was expected, but with the restrictions of what we were having out here on the West Coast made it very unique. Um, and it's been really nice to kind of return to a normal pre-COVID game day. 
uh, which here at Cal, we've had a lot of new uh, faces join us. And even some of our student athletes that weren't necessarily here for that 1920 season of like, wait, you guys actually do this? Um, the season when we were relaunching some things in November is like, yeah. So it's been really unique where I hate saying that constantly, but it's so vastly different when I've traveled back east of just like, wow, you guys were wide open and where we were in a box that it's just, we're dealing with a lot of the hiccups that everyone had last season where it's welcoming everyone back, making sure they're having fun and still feeling safe. Um, you know, this past weekend, we had a series of games where you could tell most of our fans right now are spreading out a little bit more as we're coming out of the holiday season. So they're being very, like being actively back in a venue, but still being mindful of like, oh, I might want to play it safe and space out a little bit more, um, which isn't a problem at all because uh, we have a lot of space here in Hospitalian to make it accommodating, but it's really allowed us to add in, you know, some new elements with the wireless cam to go do those crowd shots after a dunk, which has kind of elevated our game presentation. And as we welcome students back later on this month, we'll have all those bugs worked out where it's, we're close as Allison mentioned doing of practicing those procedures that are safe, so. Good stuff, yeah. And the good thing is we are headed back to that sense of normalcy. Um, which means we we can get our normal themes, normal promotions, and game activations back to normal. Um, but I think one of the biggest key factors of that is making sure we have a strong advertising plan so people know what we have going on and get them excited to come to those games. Uh, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the different advertising strategies and some of the best practices. So Stacy, I want to talk about uh, some things that you've done at Georgia Southern that have worked um, on campus and in the community. Okay, great question. So for on campus us, we partner with our on campus. I see I partner with on campus communities or departments. So I go on campus every Wednesday and we go either to our main hot spots like the student union or Russell Union, as it's called Georgia Southern. So I bring a student athlete, for example, for men's and women's basketball. We know Wednesdays, 12 o'clock lunchtime is hot. So we have something called spin the wheel that we do. So you spin the wheel, you either get a Georgia Southern flag. Or for another example, basketball, we're bringing a basketball hoop out. They shoot against a student athlete. So now our students feel way more involved. They think they can shoot better than a student, which is, it goes great with us. So if you miss the shot, we tell you get one shot. You miss it, you don't get a award. So you can either make the shot against a student athlete or spin the wheel. Most people, they see it. Wow, women's basketball player, like, oh, I can shoot. And that women's basketball player beat them. They lose the opportunity. So it's like a great networking opportunity for our students. We also have emailing that we go through with campus with our housing. Um, we work with the rat, putting our signage across all across campus. So you might see 50 chlorophyll signs saying women's basketball or men's basketball Saturday, Thursday, which is our game Thursday and Saturday. So Thursdays is, is a seven o'clock, Saturday is three o'clock. So we work hard with that. And community advertisement every first Friday or Saturdays is big at Georgia Southern Farmers Market. So we bring a bunch of posters with student athletes they sign the posters, and that is one of the great ways we go about advertising here at Georgia Southern. A lot of good stuff. Thanks for that, Stacey. Um, on the community side, I know Allison, being in uh, the city that never sleeps, um, I know you've put together a partnership, pretty strong partnership with the Las Vegas Aces. Can you talk about how that came to be and how that's going right now? Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, so one of the things we have started this year, and especially in, we started in May specifically, was we have started working with the 2022 world champion Las Vegas Aces. Just have to throw that out there. Um, so our head women's basketball coach, they she actually has a connection uh, with the Aces and she had said, hey, we'd love to start building this relationship got on a phone call with the director of operations for basketball and a couple other from uh, other people from our staff and just kind of popped on of, hey, how can we kind of do some cross promotion? So we hopped on a couple calls and we actually came out in May, towards the end of May and did uh, and attended their sneaker night. And short, and before that, we actually had done a sneaker giveaway for our students. So we, we got to broadcast and we actually gave away a pair of custom Air Force One sneakers. Everyone was flocking to the table. It was awesome. Um, 
And I know we actually got to go to the ACES facility multiple times. Uh, so they actually recognized the women's team in July or June. I'm, I'm trying, I'm backtracking now on that one. So I'm not really sure which, which month that was, but that was awesome for them to have us out there. And we attended other games where we promoted our season tickets, our uh, just in general, our wonderful season. We brought up the trophy, had them do it on court recognition with it. It was absolutely incredible. Um, and so here coming up, I know we are doing an ACES themed game day, so that'll be super fun, but, you know, just building that relationship with them and just seeing how we can kind of do the cross promotions because, you know, as the city that Ryan said, never sleeps, we have a lot of other sports going on and a lot of, a lot of other teams and two of the teams do line up. Obviously their seasons don't, but women's basketball, got to support it. Got to, got to work with what you got. Absolutely. And it sounds like you do a great job with that. So um, as far as game themes and promotions, what are some of the primary factors that go into setting that promotional schedule? Um, which games, um, giveaways, timing of all that, the functionality of what you actually give away, just that intentionality. Um, let's start with Craig on this one. Yeah, you know, Ryan, it really comes looking at the schedule. One of the things that we full do as our philosophy here at Cal is not every single game is a big game. So we'll spread it out. Uh, so as one of the things that's actually sad about this year's schedule is we're playing Stanford while most of our students are away. Uh, so it's going to have a different feel, but we'll still have some fun with Arizona late, later on in the season of uh, being able to promote our students is capitalizing off of knowing you know, your campus community. Um, so what comes to my mind, that's probably the best story is last season, we actually ended the season with Stanford. Um, so what we did for our Filipino Heritage Night, um, a few of you might have heard of this artist known as P Pilo. Uh, we had an end with Pilo and we were working with them throughout our football season to have them perform with our band. Unfortunately, due to COVID, we actually lost our football game where we were going to do this idea. So we pitched it to the Pilos camp to let's do it at basketball. So he actually sent over his song arrangements to the Cal band and the band rearranged his performances, which he later on kind of did the same performance for the Warriors as they made their run to the title this past um, season. So for that game in February, we actually had Pilo perform at halftime with our band and all of our students knew who Pilo was. Um, looking back on that game and leading into it, we actually had a baseball game happening at the same time as our season finale of men's basketball. And it was actually a double header day. So we actually had women's basketball before the Pilo, uh, Pilo uh, halftime performance and Pilo performing at halftime and just senior day had a lot going on that February day that it was truly special um, where all the pieces of what Stacy mentioned and Allison mentioned earlier you know being able to communicate and also being engaged with your students and community partners we had hospital and walking uh, what some people would say during like Jalen Brown era days of being loud and impactful that throughout the summer, it's been, how do we recapitalize creating Haas, um, which we are have a lot of cool things planned up behind the scenes later on for the spring semester that we're excited to be nudging back into what we had going on last year that, you know, it's making those moments that are really unique. And it doesn't have to be, I think one of the unique things for college basketball is it doesn't have to be something like having an artist before. It can literally be having your pep band doing something unique that a lot of people tie into. So that's what makes it so much fun. Good stuff. Stacy, Allison, do you guys have any other uh, things that go into your decision making when you decide um, what themes or promotions you have throughout the season? Yes, I do. So it's actually fun. You know how to the national holiday things like we were legit go through, as a staff, we go through all the national holidays. So for example, national, I think it was like a national champagne day coming up. For example, New Year's Eve day, we have New Year's Eve game tomorrow. 
called Rocky Hannah New Year's Eve, ringing in New Year's Eve. So I like thinking like big national holidays, that everybody could come or say happy holidays. So it's nothing not like going against any rules or anything. Also, fifth year Title IX was a great success as well for us. And we also, for like smaller schools, right, we have Senior Citizen Dance Line. We have Senior Citizen come out, cheap ticket pricing, so covering revenue, creating money, while also having them experience to come on the court, do stuff they never had a chance to do at a younger age. And then also, as Allison brought up, we call it the Eagle Challenge for us. Jer Jersey Short Shoes as little kids. Now you have another another great kids that always want to come to game. Hey, I might get a chance to do the promotion again. You never know. You might get a chance, kid. Which creates another season ticket holder. Other promotions as rival games, we always do white out or blue out, which works as a success for us. And that's basically it from Georgia Southern. All right. So during a game day, um, obviously nothing ever goes as planned. You know, there's always something that, that comes up. We have to, you know, adjust last minute. So what do you guys do um, with, with any of those issues? Anything that's unforeseen that you may not have anticipated within the preparation process or even in game? Um, how do you handle those situations that come up? Uh, I try to ignore it the best way. Well, I, I try to go looking forward or keep going just because you never know. Like, looking at a fan. A fan doesn't know you messed up until you messed up. So I was like, just keep going. Go to the next segment. Just don't even think about it. So, example, if the National Anthem just so happens to start slow or it doesn't come out the secret secret for some reason, I might just put out a microphone over my laptop to keep it going. Like, something to, like, don't, I would never just stop the game. Maybe since I, like, you can't panic at all. Cause you know, you just can't panic, and I, I like being the director of running the games. And that's what I say from my end. Allison, Craig, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, actually. So for women's basketball, I run the video board itself, which will put up the game feed itself, um, the stats, pillars, any game graphics, videos, whatever, anything from that standpoint. So I know we have communication with what we call our Red Vision, which is our staff that helps us out. So I know we ha actually had a little bit of a hiccup last night um, with the video board, just uh, just kind of fr hitting the fritz for a bit. You know, we got we got it figured out though, but and that was because I was able to get a hold of my staff that I needed to and just say, hey, you know, this is what's going on. It's freezing. It's putting up the wrong graphic, and what's going on and they are able to pretty much troubleshoot it fairly fast um but it, similar to stacy you know just kind of keep moving forward uh and just kind of going with the flow if you can but definitely trying to be prepared and a couple steps ahead if possible you know and just to kind of piggyback off of all of what stacy and allison said no one really knows what we actually do on a game, game day when we're setting at the table you know producing a game or calling a game or even in the corner of like, oh, wait, we're on a run. Let's switch over. Uh, it's the beauty of like, you're just having fun creating these moments that, you know, I think Stacey said it best. You go with the flow. Because um, there's moments that you're just like, what in the world is happening? Um, you got to take a quick pause. I think the, the key thing, though, for anyone when you have something that's uniquely weird is stop, take a quick breath be like wait we have this um you know i think it's it's just fun of all the things that can happen um you know i feel like i could go on a tangent of having a whole video board a uh, whole video board system crash we actually had to relink everything in 15 minutes got it relinked no one knows that that actually happened um and you know, it's those little subtle things of like, oh, hey, the trust isn't working as we get ready for the team introductions. All right, no lights, but you're still able to still have the lights go be out and still mimic it, but you just have to go with the flow when you actually have it happen. So, uh, and then you just laugh at it and go in, fix it for the next game or try to figure out different solutions to take to not have it be a continuation of an issue, but. You know, what's what's the fun thing that they say in Vegas, Allison? There's no business like show business or something like that. So just roll with the something like stuff. that. <laughs> Good stuff. A lot of a lot of great, a uh, 
great examples there. So let's talk about uh, intern staff um, just for a quick moment. So I'm interested to hear how you guys structure your game day intern staff. If you have somebody kind of serving as a lead intern for all games or uh, maybe just one game or have everybody know the assignments and who designates those assignments, those assignments. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Stacy. <laughs> We're just both eager to talk about it. Um, so one of the things uh, we do here at UNLV, we have an intern staff of about 15 to 18, I believe, if that's the correct number. Um, we're actually transitioning one of our interns into a, a marketing assistant. So shout out to Rashad for his hard work. That's awesome. Uh, so what I have him do, he is kind of my secondary. So he is the one that is, you know, making sure our MC is good to go. She's good with the script. She's good to go with halftime. Uh, if there's any announcement coming from her, any hype moments as well, but also, you know, kind of being my runner, so to speak. Um, I pretty much try to assign uh, interns for specific in-game promotions when we have the capacity to do so. And uh, for the, but for the most part, you know, t-shirt tosses for threes is what we do here at UNLV. And I, I put them in order of which corner will get which t-shirt. So um, just a little bit of structure in that standpoint, but definitely having someone kind of run the show and run it for me while I'm, you know, sitting at the desk calling the show, it's definitely a huge help. So um, but that's kind of how we structure it for our game days. Uh, we, we have a, a GA, shout out to our GA, which is the best, Mathis. Oh, we have an intern do it. So an intern run a video board or intern run a floor journal while I'm playing music. So I, I designated, we have four corners in Handle Fields, which is the name of our gym. Each intern will have a corner with t-shirt, T for threes, every three. And for promotion, we run about four to six promotions a game. It can be up to seven. Sometimes I get a little hectic coming from a smaller school. So we just always trying to have fans engage, men or women's basketball for us. So I let each intern pick two or three contestants, depending on how many contestants we need for the match. And I always tell them when to send them to the corner. I always had them there before, uh, a media timeout before it happens. And I think that's the best way structure that we have. And it's been going successful for us. Awesome. Man, so much fun. You know, Ryan, when I think back to what Stacey Nelson just said, um, some of us are fortunate enough to have like those sports administration programs or sports management programs. So like here at Cal, we're hiring all of our students that are coming in like, oh, I'm a basketball fan or I like baseball, have no idea what actually happens when they come to a game. Um, so it's always fun for us to have our student workers. Um, since our, most of our staff, it's like, oh, interns. It's like, no, these are actually our student marketing assistants. So we actually kind of elevated their titles. But having those students that are, you know, everyday students that are not going into doing this every day of what we do, it's so much fun. Um, right before Christmas, we had the superstars out here for halftime uh, for one of our women's basketball games. And we actually had a double header, you know, because we love scheduling games on top of each other. Uh, so one of our main student workers, she actually helped assist me with the superstars and she was like, this is so much fun. So she actually got to help out with the halftime act of you know, if you've seen a Zuprasar performance, they usually come out during the second half. She got to help orchestrate, like pull this, the act stuff from the court, had the best moment, but it really is utilizing, you know, if it's interns or student workers to the best piece to elevate your game presentation. Um, one of the things that a lot of our students have asked that we're going to work on throughout the spring semester is, you know, what goes into writing a lovely script um, or how does it work in setting in the chair, being able to play music like Stacy? Um, we're going to kind of create extra space at our scorer's table to give them that opportunity to become that point person. So it's finding those little nuggets, you know, that we all have experience to kind of help train up that next set behind us to make it so much fun and enjoyable. But I'm curious, Ryan, you know, what had to be something that you had to, you know, 
of with your student workers slash interns that you might recall? Yeah, so um, so we always like to have a lead for every sport at, at Utah. And so my role essentially, at least my goal, is to turn that lead intern because they obviously have the passion, they have the drive to get better and learn and get those opportunities. My goal is to turn that intern into me on game days, right? So I want that person to be able to um, run the floor, um, designate assignments to everybody, um, and then uh, kind of serve as the point person for a lot of our big promotions. And then just basically use me as a safety net more so than anything. Um, you know, we had uh, Arizona uh, men's basketball come to town December 1st. We had a big halftime act, Grace Good, come in. And uh, we had to have people throw hula hoops her way um, during the performance. And so um, I was kind of there facilitating all that. But I also want to make sure that everybody gets the uh, experience to be able to play a large role in that, especially the lead intern. So he pretty much handled a lot of that stuff. Uh, as well as a few other things as well. Um, but, uh, but, you know, just examples like that. Just, I, I try to make sure that we give, you know, the folks who are very passionate and driven and want to learn, and especially who want to do this as a career, uh, I want to make sure that they are successful at the level they're at and give them responsibilities that they will be doing at the next level within their career. So, that's my approach, um, but we always like to have one intern um, designated for each sport to serve as a lead, and that lead intern would be the one basically handling everything outside of what I would do. Um, so that'll, that would free me up to do a lot more, um, and whoever the, the game director is for whatever game or whatever sport, uh, but I guess the biggest thing for me is just making sure that we have um, the opportunities given to uh, those folks who are really passionate and really want to grow in this field. So, um, so let's go ahead and move into the prep work. So what is the game day routine for you guys? What are the, uh, some of the more important factors uh, that you guys focus on leading up to a game as it relates to the in-game atmosphere? So uh, what I do, so again, I am the one that's running the video board itself at women's basketball. I, it's a nice little touch screen, except when it gets broken, that's always the nightmare. <laughs> but I'm always the one that's uploading everything, um, making sure the video looks good on the video board. I can see it counting down, whether that's for the intro video, um, high speed rebel challenge, helmet slap tortilla, slap, something of that nature, you know, making sure I can count that down for our audio guys or for our band, whoever's taking over afterwards. Um, so I'm always checking those if applicable. I try to do it when teams aren't practicing in the gym, because obviously, you know, day before a game, they're practicing day of game, they're practicing. If it's a fun video, if it's, you know, for recognition, for example, I don't want to play that video. We luckily our sound is off, but I don't want to play that video for the team to see and then get distracted. I don't want, I want to be as uh, less distraction as I can and just pretend I almost am like pretend I'm not here kind of a scenario uh, so I'm always trying to upload when I can testing when I'm able to without being that distraction for the team as for scripting purposes I try to get our script out to our PA announcer and our MC with at least 24 hours in advance um, so I'm looking at the clock now because I know our game's tomorrow at three for women's basketball so I know I'm cutting it a little close <laughs> but pretty much scripts already said so that's awesome uh, but just making sure, you know, the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, just taking that extra precaution. So just involving our staff when I can, making sure they know when they're playing DJ music, if we need spe uh, specific palm music for our performances, but just, you know, tidying things up, everything. So. As far as us, I would say my game day thing, my game day routine, I just like listening. I'm like a natural lit person. So I have to listen to music, walking over to our gym, leaving from the office. So that's how I get my game day pump. So if a game, because like Allison, we got a game at two o'clock. I probably in the gym. I'm going to test it out today or after this, right after the Zoom call. I'm going to test it out again in the morning at eight or nine when the gym is clear. Nobody in the 
So I had all the video electronic stuff. So I put everything on electronics. I also put an order for our video person. So when I explained it to them, all you have to do is click in order according to the script. And also like Allison, I sent everybody, we have time sheets that everybody, the media, communications, uh, assistant coaches, the marketing person gets. Um, also the visiting staff gets as well. And I, we also put them around our, our hand fill out. So we put it so they know when to run out, when our team is running out, when the lights go off. So everybody knows everybody's on one queue. Also, go ahead and put everything in promotion. We have a corner that we do is for marketing. I go ahead and put all that out. I, I put out the flights, the posters. So I do all this. So once game time start, like right when doors open, an hour and a half, I'm just sitting running the show, and I can trust our GA or our intern to run it from there. And I also test out the MC. We have a light switch that we do is, that we do with Hannah. So I, I test out to make sure all the lights cut off. And then that's another thing I'm focused on seeing circumstances. When you hit it and the light is just cut, they might cut off and cut back on real quick. So you have to practice that two or three times. So I'm a person. I make sure everything is running smooth three or four times. So game time, hopefully, as y'all know, marketing, something might go wrong, but we're going to know we tested out 30 times. And I also work with the PA and the MC. I, I test them like three or four times. And we test it while the team's warming up as well to make sure nothing is going wrong. And that's all we do at Georgia Southern. All right. Um, all right, let's talk about scripting a little bit. So what are some of the most important elements within your scripting? Um, if you use any programs for that. Um, so what are, what are some things that you look for um, as far as, you know, preparing the script and things that you want to make sure you have correct? And then how do you go about executing a script in game? If you need to make any adjustments um, in game, according to game flow, anything like that. Uh, so let's, let's talk scripting. Let's start with Craig on this. Man, Ryan, you're putting me on the hot seat. I love it. No, so I am a avid lover of bands. So one of the things that's really, really unique and um, it's like the sixth sense of learning. Um, and I'm sure you all can relate. Teams being hot on a run, opposing team hits that timeout. I will immediately, we actually, our band actually has shorties ready, like short 20, 30 second versions of our fight songs that, you know, if it's going to be our media, I will go shorty and then let's go into the timeout because all of our fans actually are really diehard um, and do some of our band songs that it makes sense. So it's like a quick hit that um, we'll do the shorties. And then we actually have Mike Mins, which are our yell leaders. So we actually have them scripted for every time out. But based off of how a game's going, we'll be like, nah, you're dead. We'll, we'll kill them real quick. Bring them back in later. So it's just kind of, you know, having that roadmap of like, oh, we have some sponsorship elements that we need to hit. I actually might move it a timeout later, you know, based off of what our corner is saying for us of do we have a contestants or not. So I'm kind of more of a, I will use it as a roadmap, but, you know, I hate saying this because I'm accustomed to it. We get in a habit of we'll set that script for game one of the season. We won't actually audible out of it. So as we go throughout the season, I actually have some fun of really intentionally not stacking everything the same time out. So what I mean by that, um, and you can check it out, you know, beneath us or in the NACMA community. Um, we have a sponsorship element where we have a pit of the week. So when we have two games in a week, I necessarily don't play the song underneath it on game two or game one, uh, just because to keep it fresh with our fans, you know, we'll have our DJ play for one game. So it's looking at those moments of not scripting hard of, let me have this be this time out, this time out. I try to play a little bit of a moving game for me that keeps the game fresh and not just like, all right, here we go, everyone. Same script as the night before, checkmate done um you know we get in a habit too quickly of not playing that refresh game so those are just some little nuggets that 
make it more fun. It does create a little bit more work and show flow, but you know, with the guest pass, everyone can go look at it and, you know, the people who are going to activate it on the day of the game aren't necessarily going to look, so they won't catch one like, oh, you flipped it, so. And Makes sense. Alex, what are your, well, Stacy, what are your practices? Okay, so I'm almost like the opposite of Craig. I'm not against being, but I'm for the band. So far as scripting-wise, I have I have everything color-coordinated, so the band could be one color. My interns know the interns should know the script just in case they don't. They know all the in game promotion. They know when, when they see the green or the other color, like, okay, this is us. This is marketing efforts on court promotion. And, and as we all know, if a team is on a run, if we get hot early, for example, if our women's team or men's team get hot early and it's a quick timeout, I'm just going to play music myself. I'm, I'm going to take the music at certain times of the game. But for another example, if we are like, Say we go third quarter, five under the five, and we, we just blowing them out. I'll let the band have it. But if it's like I'll, I'll rule the thumb, I'll, I learned from my boss and Ryan, if 10 points are under in the fourth quarter or for last meter time out the second half, you take the music because you're here for the student athletes at the end of the day. And if it just it's always about more minimal switch. I feel like sometimes if we if we're going high, not 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 the band, but I feel like we're going high. Sometimes you just gotta have to say go DJ. You go to music, just cut. Sometimes you got to rip the script and just say we'll go, we'll get back to that. But right now, like for me, if I'm running music, I'm just gonna take the music or DJ run music. But if it's a certain song for like a band, if we got like a special nominee in the building, I'm just gonna let the band have it. So it just all depends on game moment, who's hot, who's not hot. And I, it's all about student athletes, which one they prefer. So that's why a good thing us knowing about student athletes with. If I know student athlete loves the band moment and they hit the clutch shot or got a clutch steal and dump, I'm just telling the band to go because I student athletes might love the band as well. And that's all for me. So I can also kind of touch on it as well. So I'm actually going to be opposite of these guys right now. So for hot timeouts in the second half and everything, if UNLV calls it, we actually go with our band because we want to kind of pause they might have something that might stop the momentum but they might get a fight zone to get the crowd involved so something of that nature and then we are one of the few institutions that are fortunate to uh bring in a dj he works with a lot of our sports he is absolutely awesome uh so when uh, the opposing team calls that timeout he can throw something in that's like okay i know it's going to get our girls or our uh, players hyped they're ready to roll they're going to keep this momentum going so that's kind of how we structure it here um, and then for our script itself, similar to what Stacy was saying here, I make sure our band has a specific color so they know when to play. I have a specific color for our DJ. If I'm not sure how it's going to be, I actually change it to another color. Videos are yellow, so we know, hey, this is the video element. Um, let's see. And then for our MC, for anything that she is doing, we I put that in pink, and that's when my interns know, hey. This is exactly what we need to help on, whether it's on court, whether it's, you know, off to the side for um, the high speed rebel challenge or something. That's how we coordinate it, uh, but definitely run through before a game as well. Of just kind of, hey, here's what we've got going on, anything special, anthem performances, halftime, whatever the case may be, just making sure everyone's on the same page, literally like on the script. <laughs> well, hey, you know, Stacy wanted to throw that nice flow at me. As you can tell, I actually color code my script as well. But, you know, it's one of those things that, um, and to Allison's point, you run through it. So one of the things I really, really enjoy uh, during game days is all of our student workers come two hours before the game. So rough, which is an hour before we open up gates. So during that sweet 30 minutes before we open up, we've already did our video board run through and kind of ran through the show itself. We'll actually kind of talk through it with our student workers and actually go play the games, but not play them uh, just so they can actually visualize seeing what's happening. Um, and it's actually refreshing to help them actually get a feel of like, oh, for the t-shirt cost, you actually mean play around with the crowd, not just, oh, you get a shirt. Um, so it's always those fun moments that you can kind of have fun with you know, whoever needs to see the script or whatever. We actually do two versions of our script. So 
One version of the script that I look at actually has the PA piece in our number system for um, expressions. I give our student workers just the expression numbers, which that's actually for our control room staff. So they don't actually see the PA piece because let's be real, they're not going to listen anyways. So save a little bit of trees in the process, but we actually print out multi vote versions of the script so that way they can actually see it. Um, and you know, the guest pass feature of Showflow is so nice. It's just like, go look, you can go look if you actually are gonna go look ahead of time, which let's be real, most students aren't gonna go look ahead of time or even spirit groups won't go look ahead of time. So, um, but having those tools in play actually, you know, help make, you know, game day be a little bit easy. Good stuff, good stuff, I love it. All right, so uh, for each of you, we'll start with Allison this time. Uh, so what are some of the key lessons that you've learned over the years at your different institutions and different levels? What are some of the key takeaways that you've taken from each institution you've been at? Great question. I've taken Craig's spotlight on this one, so thank you for that. <laughs> Definitely for me, what I've learned, not only at professional division two and division one is communication is key. I know that sounds super cheesy, but the more involved you have other staff members, other departments, the better that's going to be for you. So whether it's uh, recognition, whether it's halftime, something of that nature, if you can just inform whether it's the director of operations, an assistant coach from the team side, but then also inf informing your game day staff, whether and that's from your ushers to ticket takers, just to events and staff in general, just making sure that they're aware, hey, you know, we have a certain player coming in from uh, the Aces or something of that nature, or hey, National Anthem Singers coming in and they're bringing their mother and father, something of that nature. Uh, we just like to make sure that everyone's in the loop as much as possible. I know for Women's Basketball, for example, we actually do a weekly meeting to kind of go over upcoming games, what's going on, everything like that, just so everyone's on the same page. That way we know, hey, there aren't any hiccups, everything's been said. And then obviously things change in college, college athletics all the time. So just always being flexible where you can be and just keeping, and again, keeping everybody in the loop, just making sure everyone knows this is what page we're going to be on. And I, like I said, I've experienced it at all different levels and the more you can communicate and I over communicate, it's definitely a flaw of mine for sure, but I'd rather be way specific with everything, then just not everyone have that information. Well, you know, I think I laugh at how and say she stole the spotlight. Um, you know, no two schools are alike, which is actually really fun. Um, one of the things that might work at, you know, I love the example of the sandwich boards and A-frames. Here, they're so much fun that we actually had A-frames stolen last year, so we haven't brought them back online yet for this year um, because they loved our student athlete that we had highlighting the game. Like, parents actually stole it, and, you know, we're an urban campus that it can happen, so it was like, well, put extra weights on it that, you know, something that simple actually goes really far where, you know, Stacy's activation, he touched on earlier of the will. We actually did a finals study break at the library, which was really uh, fun to watch everyone come over. Like there were some students that literally were like looking at their phones. It's two o'clock. Hey, can I still spin the will? Come on, we've been here for four hours. You waited the last second. Um, finding those unique things that just work, uh, that can be really impactful you know, that create the moments, um, you know, whether it's for the student athletes, fans, alumni, whoever you're trying to target, it's creating those moments that are special that become lifelong moments that, you know, I always get emotional in the saying this piece, but you don't realize the impact of, of whatever promotion or giveaway might actually be for that fan. Um, and are, you know, you see it on eBay, like, wow, we did a lot of work on that and sell it on eBay for eBay for a hundred. Um, those little touch points that mean a lot. So it's always not losing the 
you know, not losing, being lost in the moment, you know, cherishing that moment and being able to enjoy it. Um, as Chris said, it's gonna be repetitive. Just always being in the moment and just I'll be honest, one of the key lessons I would say, just working with other people in the industry, because we as you said, we all had different techniques. So what for example, if UNLV, Utah, or California do it, I ask one of them how they do it, hey, how you did it. I might twink it to Georgia Southern style. So it's not, we're not mimicking each other. Only people that knows that is us. And we all understand, we all work as one. So it's not every day we're competing for students and student athletes game for like win and lost columns. But in the day, if I see Ryan or Allison Craig do it very well, I would hit, just hit them up and ask, hey, how did you do that? And I just tweak it, George. So now our student athletes love it. So we still having the same bond and create the same experience. So they're like, okay, I love that. And um, let's, that's all I have to say. They are explained it very well. All right. So as we wrap up here, so what are some final pieces of advice that you give to our listeners? I will go first. Fall forward. Always reach out. Have a mentor. Have a, just have friends in the industry that you know you can just reach out to. Just you don't know, always have to be about work. You know, just having a conversation. Hey, how you did that? Hey, just different ways of just networking in this industry to keep it going forward. And yeah, I always fall forward, never fall backwards. Just keep going. I like being in the hot seat at times. I just like going, just having fun. Just love, just love working basketball. And I'm biased basketball. That's my favorite sport. So yeah. I can go next. Uh Stacey, that was a great answer. Uh definitely fall forward. Just keep chugging along pretty much. That's kind of how I say it. Uh, but for me specifically, I know, again, communication, I literally just talked about it, but communication itself is key. My gosh, the amount of times, like something can possibly fall through the crack because it's going to, it got to be realistic. It's going to fall through eventually sometimes, but you're going to work through it. Um, but the more you can communicate, the better, uh, and kind of a little piggyback on that as well. Like start net networking, you know, reach out to some people like Stacey just mentioned, like you want to see how someone successfully did it. Half the time, there's so many people in this industry that want to help you. And, you know, whether it's the profession or professional level, you know, advanced, mid, young professionals, we all want to help each other and be successful in our own ways. So if you can tweak it, like Stacey said, to your institution, that's awesome. But you're never going to know how to tweak it or work on it if you don't reach out and ask. So Another form of communication, for sure. <laughs> well, you know, I think probably one of the biggest things, um, I'm guilty of it. I love traveling to watch different games. I can't not be a fan um, but when I'm able to actually get to enjoy. Um, you know, Stacy touched on it, asking and networking. Um, I can't tell you how many times I will go to um, feel like it's name dropping at this point, but it's taking advantage of the resources that we have, you know, whether it's the 49ers, the Warriors, the Sharks, even the Kings up in uh, Sacramento. I follow them on social, but I actually go to their games and our video crew has actually got scripts for me. Um, and I've been lucky enough to actually work in some of their control rooms where it's like, oh, I actually have their script. You will be surprised that everyone does something closely together that you can mimic um, and reach out and ask for questions. Um, I think back to this past football season where we were onboarding our whole new staff, I indirectly know, well, I know the director for the 49ers and I was just going to pick her brain and it turned into me actually shadowing. So don't be afraid to ask is kind of my there's no such thing as that stupid question or feeling like that person's not going to get back to me because they're so busy. Um, networking and reaching out is key. Uh, and not being afraid to just, you know, I, I think you can see it through all of us. We joke with each other constantly. Um, so we're able to just reach out, shoot over a text, say, hey, how, how are things going? And able to, you know, bridge different ideas together that it works so 
biggest thing of looking forward to, I think, is just actually having a normal spring and actual normal summer of planning and really elevating a show and driving in for fans, whether it's off of the fan development piece or even, you know. Oh, see, now y'all are getting, going too much. So I'm just going to stop on that one of just developing that next game day experience. That's great. So. All right. And finally, what this is for each of you. So what are you most excited about uh, for the basketball conference season uh, spring of 2023? I'll go first. Uh, let's see. Try to do this without throwing shots. So um, I'm gonna say be the number one attendance record Sun Belt. That's that's the goal. That's what I'm excited for. Be no one attendance record Sun Belt. And just come with different ideas. Come with uh, I love I never the February, the first Wednesday of February. It recognized all our women. It always successful. I won basketball coaches. I also excited for our rival games. Uh, blue out white uh, uh, alumni games, uh, season ticket holders games. Just I'm just excited for conference play. It gets good quality basketball, which none covers with quality as well, but it, it feels more impactful when it's conference play. And you can see how your marketing or, or plan actually going to fruition. That makes sense. I can go next here. So kind of a goal I already hit for the season. We actually were able to do um, season ticket holder jerseys that were replica jerseys of the Lady Rebels. Uh, wow, jerseys, a lot of jerseys in that sentence there. So it's a nice red jersey. Very awesome that we got to have that. So we actually got to surpass some of our numbers in previous years. I think this is, at least from looking back, the highest we've had uh, for season ticket numbers, which is absolutely incredible to see. Um, but, you know, I, I know something like promotional wise, I'm really excited for, like I mentioned at the beginning, we have an ACES uh, game day coming up here, uh, January 16th, 8 p.m. tip off. It's actually going to be a CBS game as well. So that's super awesome. That'll be our second one of the season. And we're hosting Boise State. So we've got a t-shirt giveaway with an awesome design. We're going to have some of the ACES staff there, possibly some players, going to have their mascot buckets. We're going to do a lot of fun things. We're actually going to try to get either staff and or players, if they are there, to toss some shirts into the crowd and just do a recognition of them. Um, have a step and repeat backdrop everything for them. So super excited again to keep building that relationship forward with them. But like I said, you know, I've kind of hit that goal of what I'm excited for, but excited to see this promotion come through here in the next couple of weeks. You know, I think Ryan's going to laugh at this because Utah does it really well. But one of the things that the Pac-12 um, gives each institution is 50 tickets for their students for the men's tournament and the women's tournament. So um, last year was a little bit weird with the pandemic. Um, so I'm super excited for us to have our student reward trip return in some form or fashion for men's basketball um, and then actually develop it for the women's basketball tournament, hopefully. Um, just seeing the students go to Vegas uh, for our conference tournaments. It's a trip unlike any other. Uh, you'll probably see it in our shared stuff. I'll have a photo from our trip in 2017. Um, for those students rooting on the team and kind of getting rewarded for a trip to Vegas is something that's truly special. So being able to have that come back or at least have all the legwork ready for it to either come online for the season or next season is what I'm most excited for. Um, and just actually having fans fully back in Mercy game days out West. It's so nice. Um, so looking forward for the, the, the race to Vegas, so to speak for us. So, so look out, Ryan. It's going to be fun. Game on, Craig. All right. Well, thanks everybody. Um, it's been a great, uh, great information being shared here. And if you are wanting to connect with one of us, all you need to do is uh, shoot us an email. I know we're all uh, very excited to meet new people and um, learn from you guys and provide opportunities for you guys to grow as well. So don't be shy if you have any questions for us or just want to reach out to 
just say, hey, I want to get to know you. Feel free to go ahead and shoot any, any of us an, an email. Be more than happy to do that. Well, that wraps it up. Uh, thanks, guys. Let's have a great spring.